This video is sponsored by me. Check out my new channel, Aviation Station, with the link below. Niagara Falls, 30th of November, 1962. The future of air travel is here. The exciting new concept aircraft dubbed the X-22 is revealed to the world. It had four ducted fans, could carry eight, and fly vertically. But the military saw a better use for this design. Under heavy fire, this VTOL aircraft would have changed Navy operations, marine deployment, and through civil application, the way we commute around the world. Its ability to fly, compact design, and stable flight dubbed it the perfect blend of helicopter and plane. But it would never enter production. This is the story of the Bell X-22. In the early 60s, there were several studies in creating the first mass-produced VTOL aircraft, a plane that could operate like a jet and then at the same time land vertically where needed. The Air Force had experimented with the CL-346 in the 1950s, but as one commentator pointed out in this video of mine, it would have burned the deck of the aircraft carrier with its jets when landing if it was actually deployed by the Navy. Thus, a true VTOL design would be needed for practical application in all three branches of the US military, the Air Force, Navy, and Army. This project would be called the Tri-Service VSTOL Transport Program and would address the needs of all three. The main goal of this program was to develop a small number of prototype VTOL transport aircraft that would use different concepts and to perform operational evaluations of their usefulness. Some of the other requirements were that this VTOL design would need to fit on board carriers and try not to have any complex wing folding mechanisms. Bell, who had been exploring such designs throughout the 1950s, had promising leads with ducted fans. These were rotors that were still open to the elements, but had the ability to operate like jet engines. They had designed an aircraft called the D-190 Sea Air Rescue Utility Aircraft for the Air Force that could even be carried under the fuselage of a Lockheed C-130 Hercules. It had two duct fans and had a surprising number of applications in the real world. However, during that development, engineers discovered that a dual tandem ducted fan configuration, that is four ducted fans, allowed a shorter wingspan and thus a lighter and smaller design to work. This led to the design D-2022 called the US Marines VTOL Assault Transport System, able to carry 30 armed troops into battle. But this project in its earlier version didn't really get past wind tunnel tests. Entering into the 1960s, the US military needed to pull the trigger and select a design to move ahead with for the Tri-Service Transport Aircraft Project. The tilt-wing Vought XC-142A would win this contest, just beating the Bell & Lockheed D-2064. But the committee was so impressed with the Bell & Lockheed design that they were given a $27 million contract which is a quarter of a billion dollars today, to bring it to life. Internally, they called this new version the exciting name of the model D2127, but it was quickly dubbed the X-22 program. And this is what it was like. The Bell X-22A had something of a boxy fuselage that was 39.7 feet long and a wingspan of 39 feet wide, although its front wing was only 23 feet wide to allow the two different sets of rotors to not interfere with one another and the whole aircraft was only 20 feet tall. This smaller stature allowed it to fit within hangars and ships without any folding wings and as it was so small, it only had a maximum takeoff weight of around 8,000 kilograms, or 17,500 pounds, with its four GE turboshaft engines providing 1,267 horsepower, or 945 kilowatts each. 
each powering a different propeller that was 7 foot wide or 2.13 meters. These tilted duct fans were the magic of the design. They would be able to rotate completely to allow the aircraft to lift off from the ground vertically and then turn horizontally to allow the plane, if I can call it that, to fly horizontally at some speed. By having four fans instead of just two, there would also be a large pitch trim and control forces giving the aircraft precise control in hover and transition modes, something that had plagued many VTOL designs before. This plane would also be safe with each engine powering a different fan and thus if one got knocked out the aircraft could still fly, although it would be quite underpowered. These propellers would be able to take the aircraft up to a top speed of 221 knots, which is 254 miles per hour or 409 kilometers per hour, but it only had a range of 387 nautical miles, which is around 716 kilometers. So hardly the range or speed we commonly discuss on this channel with some of our more ridiculous designs, but compared to the range and speed of a typical helicopter today, say for example the Bell 206 long ranger, it's around double the speed and comparatively the same range. It would also have a service ceiling of around 27.8 thousand feet or 8,500 meters, meaning the cabin would require some pressurization to keep the crew and passengers in comfort. Speaking of, its size didn't exactly afford a lot of internal space, so it could only carry a crew of two and have six passengers on board. But this was only the beginning. Bell actually planned other versions of this aircraft, such as an attack military version. Bell fully intended for this design to be the beginnings of a whole new lineup of military and civil aircraft. We know that there were at least 10 other variants proposed, and while we don't have all the information on all of them, here is the highlight reel. An enlarged development of the X-22 for cargo operations with a rear ramp. A ducted fan large transport aircraft using the same fan configuration for marine deployment. A ducted fan very large transport aircraft known as the Model 2240 for military operations under fire. Armed X-222A proposal with two trainable gun pods and offset underside turret and a single deployable rocket pod. A United States Air Force Tactical Air Command VTOL aircraft with a wholly new tandem cockpit and bombs that it could drop on enemy positions. And another version with guns but also missile racks. Pew pew! And a special Navy search and rescue version. And lastly, apparently there was also one that could launch torpedoes, giving the Convair submersible seaplane a run for its money. By 1963, Bell had conducted many tests in wind tunnels with up to eight separate scale models, including a completely full-sized one, to test the ducted air fans. But the main show came by 1966 with the first of two X-22A test aircraft rolled out onto the runway. It performed a test flight for 10 minutes and quickly performed four vertical takeoffs and landings, as well as a few 180 degree turns. It was hailed as a success, and the team quickly rolled out additional tests to log as many flight hours as possible. Alas, that would not be the case, and after 3.2 hours of flying, the impossible happened. The fuselage broke in half when testing an emergency landing, and the supposedly fail-safe system failed at the same time. It turned out that the hydraulic tubes that carried the oil for the four different engines had failed due to excessive vibration. No one was hurt, but it set the program back until the second and last prototype could be brought up to speed. It would be one year later when the second prototype took to the sky, and this one would operate for the Tri-Forces for many years as a test aircraft, logging 229 flights or 125 flight hours. It did three major tests with the three branches of the military, with their pilots and engineers looking over the aircraft. It was praised as the aircraft that was easier to control than a plane, more stable than a helicopter in hover mode, and could very well be the future of air travel as we know it. So if it was so great, why was it never put into production? 
1968, the X-22 was deemed most useful for the US Navy, who then took over the project for further testing. And by further testing, I mean a good, solid 15 years of tests. That's right, they put it on the back burner where the single prototype would be tested until 1984, operating countless flying hours and landings, all while still seeking that elusive production contract. In the autumn of 1984, the program was finally cancelled as interest in VTOL technology had faded and the testing team disbanded. The engineers seeked more funding, if anything, to keep the program alive, but all they could get was a few training operations for Navy test pilot schools. The Navy then tried to hand over the prototype to the Navy Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida, but the museum never had any desire to display this unique aircraft that were not actually used by the US Navy. So with no other choices, the Navy made moves to actually scrap the prototype design. This made the engineers at Cole Span hold on to the aircraft until 1995 in the faint hope that someone else would come into power at the Navy and resurrect the program. Unfortunately, that never happened and finally it was moved to Niagara Aerospace Museum where it was still there today. A unique aircraft from a unique part of history at rest at last. So why was it never turned into an actual production aircraft? The X-22A was always intended to just be a test airframe and had several flaws in its original design. For one, it never reached the top speed of 525 kilometers per hour or 326 miles per hour that the Navy needed. Although it did come very close on a very windy day with 504 kilometers per hour. In addition, the range and lifting capacity of the aircraft seemed weak and the Navy really couldn't find a role for the aircraft, especially that this prototype would actually require a second design when it would move into actual production. Also, it was rumoured that the Navy never really liked the design in the first place, preferring the competing Douglas model that never reached the prototype stage. Perhaps there is a hint here that the powers that be simply decided to park this concept aircraft that landed on their plate. Ah, politics. Another issue with the design was the noise. For a jet engine producing constant level of thrust, it gets louder the smaller the diameter of the propeller gets. For a helicopter with a vast blade spinning around it, it makes a pretty low whooping noise whilst the small ducted fan on the X-22 would have made a loud roar. In fact, from the time, people near the airport reportedly were bothered by the loud noise of this test aircraft. Any actual production model would actually need to be upgraded with a more stealth design or the aircraft would not be suitable for combat roles. The enemy would hear it coming. Whilst I call them flaws, you have to keep in mind these were just problems that needed to be tested and figured out, something that the prototype was designed to do. So therefore, it would have been an additional production model that would have actually been the version that the US military would use. With more funding and research required to make the X-22 work, the US military decided it had gone far enough and that its learnings could be used for a totally radical new design, one that would slowly evolve into the V-22 that we have today. That switched from ducted fans to tilting rotors. But Bell never really gave up on the idea. The idea of an aircraft with four ducted fans never really left the back of the firm's mind, and we can see that today with Bell's Nexus Air Taxi design. This electrical powered aircraft has six ducted fans and seems a strong contender for the flying car concept. Although the design of the fan seems to show that the airflow would go from the front ducts into the rear ducts and then create a whole bunch of turbulence whilst in flight. Although Bell should hurry, as it turns out that both American Airlines and Virgin Atlantic have both bought the new vertical aerospace VAX-4, a flying aircraft that is designed to help commuters fly around cities. So we very well might see them ramp up their designs to stay competitive and bring this concept to market as quickly as possible. 
And speaking of competitive, if you like this video, then I suggest you check out the story of the first American VTOL aircraft, the CL346, on this very channel. Or for more helicopter adventures, I have a long video on my channel about the rise of the rich and luxurious helicopters of Brazil that you can watch right here. But if you're craving aviation news, then pop over to my second channel called Aviation Station, where I'll be doing all sorts of shorter, looser videos as rapidly as possible about all things aviation. So I'll see you over there. Special thanks today, as always, to Scott from Aerospace Projects Review, who dug up some old photos of the different designs. You should go check out his website for exciting photos and other content about crazy other different concept aircraft that were never built, especially the different versions of the SR-71 that he's now just published as a really great book. Lastly, I'd like to say a very special thank you to my Patreons who have been on this journey with me for almost a year now. Many thanks guys and I couldn't have done it without you. If you'd like to become a Patreon and see videos early and chat with me and suggest topics for me to make on my videos, then come over and jump onto Patreon. Thank you so much for watching.